Allah does as He wills, Allah creates whatever He wills, Allah guides whom He wills, Allah deviates whom He wills, Izzat, respect, Allah gives to whom He wills, and disgrace, and bringing one down, Allah does to whom He wills, Allah gives wealth to whom He wills, Allah withholds wealth from whom He wills, happiness to whom Allah wills, sadness to whom Allah wills, life to whom Allah wills, death to whom Allah wills, Whatever happens, that which Allah wills will happen. It will happen in the time that Allah wants it to happen. It will happen in the manner in which Allah wants it to happen. It will not happen before Allah wants it. It will not happen after Allah wants. It will not happen more than that which Allah wants. It will not happen less than that which Allah wants. Allah is the giver of life. Allah is the giver of death. Allah is the giver of health. Allah is the giver of sickness. And that which Allah does not will, all the forces of this earth can get together. They will not ever bring it into existence. Majestic pride is my garment, is my robe. And greatness, bigness, loftiness, splendor, this is my garment. And whoever competes with me for any one of these things, then I will not look at who he is. I will throw him in the fire of hell. Why? He is the Almighty Allah. No God has the right to be worshipped He. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen, the most merciful, the most kind. He is the Almighty Allah. He is the King, the King of all kings. He is the pure. He is the holy, free from defects. He is the watcher over his subjects. He is the giver of peace. He is the giver of security. He is the compeller. He is the supreme. He is the creator. He is the maker. He is the fashioner. He is the bestower and the giver of forms. To Allah belong the beautiful names. He is the Almighty and He is the All Wise. Allah complain. Oh my slave, you have turned away from me. You have gone in some other direction. I, oh Allah, am I not sufficient for you? Oh my slave, to whom are you turning your attention to? Whom are you turning your attention to? To something that is better than me. Sahaba of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam request the Nabi of Allah. Oh Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us, is our Allah far away? Is our Allah far away? Do we need to shout out to Him, or is He nearby? Can we whisper to Him? Oh Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, my slaves are asking you about me. Tell them that I am very near. We are closer to you, closer to you. A pregnant woman carrying a child, that child is not as close to the mother as Allah is to each of his slaves. We are closer to you than your jugular vein. I will answer them. Who is there that asked from Allah and was not granted? Who is there that knocked at the door of Allah and that door was not open for them? Who is there that can make this claim? Allah is there, O oh insan. Whenever you will call out to me, whenever you will have hope, whenever you will, have, will turn to me, Allah says, I am there, I will answer your pleas. O oh slave, if you sin against me, and sin against me, and sin against me, till the whole earth, your sins fill up the whole earth, till he reaches right up till the heaven of Allah. Then once, once with sincerity you turn to Allah and say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Once you will turn to Allah with sincerity, Allah says, I will wipe away all your sins and it will not matter to you. The slave of Allah has come back to Allah. The slave of Allah has come back to Allah. Allah doesn't need us. Each and every one of you has to worship me. Your days are in ibadat, your nights are in ibadat. All of you become like Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The collective ibadat will not increase my greatness, not one bit. Oh my slaves, if all of you have to become fajir, have to become fatik, your days are in disobedience, your nights are in disobedience, all of you become the slaves of shaitan, all of you become like shaitan, this will not diminish, this will not decrease from my greatness, not one bit. Allah is independent, Allah does not need his creation. Oh mankind, all of you are beggars, you can be a president, you can be a minister, you can be a millionaire, you can be a billionaire, in front of you Allah, you are a beggar. Allah is the only one independent, and Allah is the only one worthy of praise. Comes home, 
to Khadija رضي الله تعالى عنها يا Khadija mission of Nubu'at has been outlined O oh Khadija the days of sleep and rest for Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has come to an end O oh Khadija who am I going to invite who is going to listen who is going to listen the way and the worry of the whole of mankind whole of insan whole of jinnat has been placed on the shoulders of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I will be the first to take the place From the first day, she gave everything, everything. She was the wealthiest woman in Mecca. Yet the day comes that there is no food at home. Today, his own ummah has forgotten his efforts. Ali رضي الله عنه says that person who will rely on his intelligence, he will go astray. That person who will rely on his strength, he will be disgraced. That person who will rely on his wealth, his wealth will run short. That person will rely on his mind, his mind will be destroyed. That person will rely on Allah. That person who has corrected his relationship with Allah, Allah will correct his relationship with the entire creation. He will never run short. He will never be deviated. He will never be disgraced. His intelligence will never be destroyed. Allah is sufficient. Allah is sufficient. Allah complains. Oh my slave, you have turned away from me. You have gone in some other direction. I, oh Allah, am I not sufficient for you? Oh my slave, to whom are you turning your attention to? To whom are you turning your attention to? To something that is better than me? But to cry that the deen of Allah is dying. The deen of Allah is dying. That deen for which my beloved Nabi took the stones of time. That deen for which my beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam underwent months and months of hunger. That deen is dying. Today to cry for that there is no one. And he used to say that until and unless, until and unless the ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not learn to cry for deen, then his tears for the Muslims will be to no avail. Oh insan, what has put you into a deception about your Rabb who is Kareem? Allah wants you to become His. This heart has to belong to Allah. This body has to belong to Allah. He who will love for Allah's sake, hate for Allah's sake, give for Allah's sake, withhold for Allah's sake. This is perfection of Iman. When the living is for Allah, when the dying is for Allah, when the wealth belongs to Allah, when the life belongs to Allah. Those who have ishq for Allah. More than love, when the reliance of everything has come out and only the reliance of Allah. And Allah speaks of the basic, most fundamental level of hidayat that whether it is beneath the earth, whether it is the minerals, whether it is the platinum, whether it is the iron ore, whether it is the gold, whether it is the silver, whether it is the surface of the earth, whether it is the mountains, whether it is the rivers, whether it is the trees, whether it is the birds, whether it is the insects, whether it is humankind, whether it is jinnat, whether it is the animals, whether it is the multitudes of creations living within the seas, whether it is the clouds, whether it is the asteroids, whether it is the comets, whether it is the planets, whether it is the sun, whether it is the stars moving upwards, the first heaven, the angels of the second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, seventh heaven, whether it is Jibra'il, whether it is Mikail, whether it is Israfil, whether it is Israel, the basic most fundamental level of hidayat that from the earth till the arsh of Allah everything is dead nothing benefits nothing harms nothing gives life nothing gives death nothing gives respect nothing gives disgrace nothing gives wealth nothing gives poverty nothing gives benefit nothing gives harm except one Allah O oh, insan, look around you, every single thing within the heavens and the earth, every single thing within the universe, it testifies and it bears witness to this fact and it will remind you that Allah is the greatest and greatness belongs to the almighty Allah alone. Look at the creation of man. When you ponder over the creation of man, when you look at the eyes with which he sees, when you look at the ears with which he hears, when you look at the nose with which he smells, when you look at the tongue with which he tastes, when you look at the hands with which he grasps, 
and touch on the head with which he thinks, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look at the intelligence of man and you look at his technology, you look at his advancements, you look at the tools he possesses, yet he cannot equal and make something as simple as a spider's web. You know that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look above you and you look at these great creations of the Almighty Allah, the sun and moon, and you ponder over their fixed courses, the Quran says, never will the sun go past the moon and never does the night outstrip the day. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at the stars and trees and you realize that the, even these stars and these trees prostrate before the Almighty Allah and these great heavens above, even they are afraid of the Almighty Allah. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ponder of the verse of the Quran and you realize that he provides for every single fish and animal in the ocean, he provides for every bird in the sky, he provides for every creature on land, small or big, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you ponder of the verse of the Quran that he has let forth two seas, one sea is of salty water, the other is of sweet water and these seas meet together. The salty water meets with the sweet water, but the salty water, it doesn't cross onto the sweet side and the sweet water doesn't cross over to the salty side. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at the Niagara Falls and how it looks like a mountain of water and then when you ponder over how the sea parted and it gave way to the likes of Sayyidina Musa Ali Salam and the Bani Israel and how it became two mountains of water, one on either side and according to the Torah, 600,000 people make this crossing. Who was holding that water? Mountains of water. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for Allah. He is the Almighty Allah. He is the first. There is nothing before Him. He is the last. There is nothing after Him. He is the All High. There is nothing above Him. He is the most near. Nothing is more near than Him. He is the knower of all things. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen. The most great, the most high. And when you ponder over the greatness, when you ponder over the knowledge of the Almighty Allah, you will bow down in prostration and you will recognize that greatness belongs to the Almighty Allah. Look at this earth that you live in. Allahu Akbar. Look at the size of this earth. Look at the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created inside this earth. Then ponder over at the speed at which this earth is traveling at this moment in time. As you listen to the reminder, yet you are firm on this earth. It, it has no effect on you. When you ponder over this, the speed at which it is traveling, and it has no effect on those that live within it, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Look at this sun above you. It is a sunny day. Ponder over the sun. Look at the size of the sun. Look at the core temperature of the sun, hundreds of times bigger than this earth. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Then when you ponder over the solar system, you ponder over these planets that you that you learn about in schools, Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, Venus, these planets, and then you ponder over that, that our solar system is 30,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. You realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. After this, when somebody tells you that that there are solar systems bigger than our solar systems, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And then when you ponder and you are informed that there are millions of galaxies within the universe, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And then when you are informed that you sit here right now, that at this moment in time, as you listen to the reminder that, that this, this universe as it stands is being expanded by the second, when you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And after this, when somebody tells you there are seven heavens, the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is of 500 years. The distance between the second and the third is 500 years. The distance between the third and fourth is 500 years. The distance between the fourth and fifth is 500 years. Fifth and sixth is 500 years. Sixth and seventh is 500 years. Allahu Akbar, you will recognize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And after this, if somebody was to tell you, after this comes the kursi of Allah, the distance between the seventh heaven and the kursi is of 500 years. And all these heavens put together, in comparison to the Kursi are nothing, they like a ring in the desert. When you ponder over this, you will realize that greatness is for the Almighty Allah. After this comes the Arsh of the Almighty Allah. The seven heavens and the Kursi put together in comparison to the Arsh of Allah is nothing, it's like a ring in a desert. When you ponder over this, you will realize that there is greatness for the Almighty Allah. Then when somebody tells you there are angels carrying the Arsh of Allah and such is the state of these angels, their heads are above the seven heavens and their feet are firm in the lowest earth and the distance 
distance between the yellow and the neck of these angels is such that it would take a bird 700 years to cover this distance. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Then you open the books of a hadith and the hadith of Abu Zar comes to mind in which the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is speaking, himself is saying, Oh my servants, you were all astray except for the one I have guarded. Ask me for guidance, I will guide you. Oh my servants, you were all hungry except for the one I have fed. Ask me for food, I will give you food. Oh my servants, you were all naked except for the one I have clothed. Ask me for clothes, I will clothe you. Oh my servants, you all sin. You, still, you sin by day, you sin by night, you commit minor sin you commit major sin I am the Almighty Allah I forgive all sins ask me forgiveness I will forgive you all my people if every one of you that I've ever created if you were to stand on a flat white plane and then each and every one of you were to ask me for something were to beg for something and I fulfill every quest that you ever that you asked me for that would not decrease what I have with me more than that the eye of a needle decreases to see when it is put inside it when Abu, Adi, Abu Idris would read this hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would fall flat on his knees because this hadith clearly suggests that the greatness of the Almighty Allah. And when you ponder over this, you realize that greatness belongs to the Almighty Allah and Allah alone. Allah! This is the reality of our Creator. Then when you ponder over the day of judgment, this earth will be grasped in his hand and these seven heavens will be rolled up in his right hand and the Almighty Allah will say on the day of judgment that I am the king, I am the king of all kings. Where are the kings of the dunya today? When nobody answers, everybody will be dumbfounded, everybody will be speechless, everybody, their heads will be on the floor, there will be impostration. When you see this on the day of judgment, you will acknowledge Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest and greatness is for the Almighty. Almighty Allah. This is nothing but a deception. You were not sent for dunya. You were not sent to fulfill your desires. The life of this world is too short. That day they will be asked, Oh insan, how long? How long did you live in this world? How many years? That day they will say, Oh Allah, we lived for one day. It may have been 100 years. It may have been 150 years. It may have been 200 years. They will say, Oh Allah, the life of this dunya was one day. For a portion of one day. Those who had given themselves to Allah, those whose hearts have been filled with the love of Allah, the announcement will be made, how much you have acquired in one day or a portion of one day. You have earned my bounties, you have earned my honor, you have earned my mercy, you have earned my delight.